Good morning, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for using the speed bar in Real Comp Online. My name is Janine Gartner. I'm one of your trainers at Real Comp, along with my partner, Tora Robertson. So for whatever classes um, that you have taken with Real Comp or will take with us again, whether it be webinar or at our office in Farmington Hills, you'll have your, herself or me to guide you through that particular topic. So. This is a really kind of a cool class. You guys are gonna learn how to work so much more efficiently using the speed bar than just our regular quick search or a detailed search, if you will, um, when doing searches in real comp. And you can do it on your phone, you can do it on your iPad, anything that you can to get things in and quick. Actually, I'll tell you the truth. Besides the map search, I'm usually in the speed bar search. Now, there are some things that you're gonna need to help you along. We actually have a guide for you that was provided by us through uh, learning the tricks and the trades of the speed bar, because a lot of things are coded, and there's just a few things that you always need to keep in mind when using the speed bar. For instance, there are some things that you can't type in, like basement or garage, certain things like that, but there's ways that I'm gonna show you how to get around that. So once I log in, I'm gonna show you where you can get that manual. There's two places that we have it that you can print out and utilize it. You're gonna need it for the first couple of times that you are using it. Then, then things will start to come to you and you'll know exactly what you can and cannot put into the speed bar. So I'm gonna show you how to do basic searches uh, on market. I'm gonna show you how to do a CMA with the speed bar. I'm gonna show you how to search just for off markets if you want. We're gonna search by zip codes. We're gonna search by different cities. We're gonna search for leases, open houses, different things of that sort that we're gonna be able to look for today. So everyone keeps saying, where do I find the manual? That's what I'm gonna show you. Let's, how, let's go find the manual. Actually, this is one of the first classes where you guys are asking, where is it? So I'm going to actually click on RCO3 to log into Real Comp Online. And make sure you, now, normally, you guys, we kind of get that you would not want to necessarily read all the announcements when you log in. It's important that you read the announcements right now when you log into Real Comp. Lots of things are changing daily, especially with your business, especially in Michigan. And we're reporting it all here under news and alerts. So make sure that you definitely go in there and read those. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys where the manual is. So I'm gonna scroll up to the top and click on the help button. And when we click on the help button, where all of our manuals are at and our recorded videos, they're always under help. I'm going to click on RCO3 manuals and videos, and you can click on training manuals by topic. And here you will find the guides that you need. Okay. Not only that, you also can scroll down just a tad bit. And in the gray, there is the speed bar. And you can learn how to do custom speed bar shortcuts. You really don't have to. What I'm showing you today is how to do that and searching by MLS number and speed bar help. You also, when I click back on the home page, okay, yes, all of our record, all of our, our um, webinars are recorded, especially at this time since we can't get to you and you can't get to us. They're all recorded. However, However, I just took you to the help button to show you where all of the recordings are at for every class. So let me go back and repeat that. When you click on the help button, it really is helpful. Everything that we know about Real Comp Online, we have recorded it and we've put it in documentation for you. So it's under the help button and you can click on RCO3 manuals and videos, print out the manual, you also, can click on training videos and recorded webinars. And here are all our shortcuts at the top. And then down at the bottom, here's the full classes, everything that we teach, everything. So you will get a recording of this, but you can go back and watch the speed bar tips and tricks, okay? Oh, 
Sorry, guys. Hold on. I got to... Being at home is something different. I'm going to have to close that out there. Hold on one second. Can't talk to mine. Can't talk to you now. Okay, cool. All righty. So that's one of the downsides of working at home, getting phone calls here that's connected to your computer. But here we go, guys. Let me get back here. Okay, so there we go. So there are our, all of our classes. I'm going to go ahead and start the webinar now so you guys know exactly what to do when it comes to speed bar uh, searching. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the home page. And your speed bar is located right in the top center of every page that you are on when you're in real time. Now, what you don't want to do, here's the first rule. When you are working with the speed bar, you cannot be in another search. So if you're like in quick search and you are using quick search, then you want to go up to the top and use the speed bar. You cannot do that. Okay. It'll block you. You're either going to use this search or the other search. So when I get back to my homepage, you also have this gray question mark. If I click on the gray question mark, it's going to help you out with some shortcuts of everything that we're going to go through today so it'll tell you some do's some don'ts how to search certain things and cool stuff like that so you'll be able to scroll down and see some other examples if you're doing something other than what i'm showing you today you also again have the document for your speed bar reference and shortcuts and the video again of what we recorded so here we go everybody i'm going to go ahead and close that window and i'm gonna go right into the speed bar now easiest pie the first thing you can do with the speed bar is type in your mls numbers doesn't matter how old it is we go up to 1995 that's how far back our history goes so you can separate everything with the space and start typing in your mls numbers if that's all you have now i only typed in two but I have typed in about, I mean, it doesn't end. I've typed in about 15 just to see if I could break it. And you can't, you just keep going. If you've got the numbers, you keep typing them in. And when you hit enter, they come up for you, okay? So that's simple, that fast, if you wanted to start just by typing in MLS numbers. You can also type in easiest addresses, if you will. Now. I had this experience a couple of years ago where an agent was fairly new to Michigan and then she was working with a customer that was fairly new to Michigan. And the customer was driving around in some neighborhood and she got the name of the street, but she did not get the address. And I don't know if you have this, you know, have gone through this, but People in the public tend to think you guys, because you're realtors, you know every single address in all of Michigan that's on market. You know the street right down there, that house right there. And you're supposed to know it and know everything about it the minute they ask. Well, it just kind of doesn't work that way now, does it? So what you have is, okay, what you have is the speed bar to help you along. So when she called, I was lucky enough to get the call. I didn't have an address from her. I didn't have a city. All I had was a street. And this is how I used the speed bar to be like a super sleuth, inspector gadget, to find the property that her customer was looking for. So I went right to the speed bar and I typed in the name of the street, which was Barrington. I put a space and I said, okay, is this property is on the market, so they say, so we're gonna put an active. Notice that I did not type in the word active, I put the code in for active, which is what that manual is going to show you guys how to do. That's all I had. So Barrington active, and when I hit enter, I got numerous results from everywhere, okay? So I was thinking, well, great, how am I gonna find this? So since we didn't have a city, because the customer wasn't sure where she was at and she couldn't tell the agent, I said, so we need a description of the property. So I went up to the top to my display and I clicked the down arrow and I changed it to the summary. When I changed it to the summary, I was, 
I literally said, okay, describe the property for me. And this is how we were able to find the home and got the MLS number, was able to send it off to the, to the customer. And it was that fast. So with only two little pieces of information, just the street and whether it's on the market or off the market, we were able to find that you tried that out. You'd be surprised how fast information will come up for you in the speed bar. But yes, you can type in addresses. So even if you don't want to type the whole thing in. So if I were typing in and I could put my asterisk right at the end, just like you do when you're searching in public records, put in the address and an asterisk and hit enter and voila, the information comes up for you. And not only does it come up for you, it does like a little history search for you as well. So it's kind of cool with all the different prices. And this one goes all the way back to, looks like 2018 that they tried to list it here. So they leased it out a couple of times and then they uh, went ahead and they finally sold it. So you get to see that as well. Okay, now how do I do a full criteria search? So let's say my customer wants to live in Farmington Hills. They are looking for a property for at least 400,000 or more. And I'll, I'll talk about how I got that in a minute. Let me finish teaching you the main part of it first. I'll, I'll get to the MLS numbers and how they do that a little bit later. But um, if someone asks, sorry, just so everybody is on board, Someone asked, how do I know what year the listing was put in? I'll get to that a little bit later when we talk about MLS numbers again. So if I want to type in criteria, how do I do that? So let's say my customer wants to live in Farmington Hills. They need at least 400000 or more of a property. They're looking for residential. They need four bedrooms, two bathrooms, something very similar as that. Things that you can go into search quick search for and type them in. Well, you can do that in the speed bar as well. And that's why that guide that you're gonna print out from the help button or from this question mark will be able to help you out with that. So here's a couple things that you need to know. When it comes to typing in cities, if the city has more than one word in it, you are going to need a code number or the area number because everything is separated with the space. It does not know that those two words, even if it's the same city, belong together. Okay. So this is where you have to dig out of the speed bar and maybe go into search per se. And I'll just click on quick search here because it's the first one. And you would scroll on down until you got to your area codes here. So I click on the county and I find the area code or codes if it's more than one city that I need. And then I would simply leave, quick search, and then I go back up to my speed bar. So let me demonstrate that for you. So we're looking for an active property in Farmington Hills, 400,000 or more with four bedrooms and two bathrooms at least. So ACTV for active, not the word active, just the code. RS for residential. CO would be condo, MF would be multifamily, VL vacant land, CM for commercial, space, I'm gonna do dollar sign, and they're looking for 400 or more. If you've ever been to any of our other classes, you know that we frowned upon putting in rounded numbers for marketing purposes. Someone is going to market the house 399,999, right? or 300 or 399 900 and you would miss out on those properties so you always want to take it down even put in an odd number just to make up for those marketing techniques that everyone uses so even though they're looking for 400 or more i'm going to put in 397 something like that and i'm going to do a plus sign because i want at least that or more you can do a range we'll talk about that later I'll do a space and I'm going to put in my city 02231 for Farmington Hills. And I'm going to do four bedrooms, so four plus and two plus for baths. And I'm going to hit enter. 
Let's see what we get. So there's 27 properties that are currently on the market right now that are residential, $400,000 or more, and Farmington knows that have four bedrooms and two bathrooms, 27 of them. Now, remember earlier I said to you guys, you can't type in basement, you can't type in garage. There's a few little things like that that you can't use in the speed bar because they're not coded. This is where the grid single line helps. So we have 27, but I need a couple of things. So I'm gonna make sure when I'm in the grid single line that I use my columns to help. And you're gonna see this demonstrated a couple times to, in today's webinar. So I'm gonna find some space here and I'm gonna go right in the center for class purposes. And I'm going to click right next to where it says city. When I click, I'm gonna click on insert column and I can add in pretty much anything that I want. So I can scroll on down here and I'm gonna put in basement type because I wanna know if it's finished or not finished. I can scroll down a little bit. I want garage size. Hold my control button down. And for the sake of it, I want the subdivision. I know I'm in Farmington Hills, but sometimes knowing if they throw out a sub it's import or zip code, it's important to make sure I get that too. And when I click apply, It'll take just a second. And bam, look, all my info, information came up. There's my basement type, my garage size, and my subdivision. And now I can sort. So if I click on subdivision, and I have to scroll back over a little bit here, if they gave me a particular sub, now I'm able to look and say, oh, right now there are, let's say they want at Hunter's Point. I can tell them, oh, right now there's only two properties that are on the market in Hunter's Point right now. So this works all the time. This is gonna cut down your worry when you do a search and quick search or detail search and you wonder how did I end up only with one or two or three properties? There's gotta be more out there like that. This using the speed bar will cut it right to the chase and you won't have to go back and try to change up something to make something happen that doesn't exist. The speed bar will tell you right away what's available and what's not. So I utilize this quite a bit. And you can save the search. So when you save it, if anything else happens in this area, it will. when you run it again, just like any other search, the latest information will come up for you. So it's kind of cool you can have your farm area or any area set up that way. Now, this is also how you delete those fields too, if you choose to. You click in the same box and you click remove column, just like that. So you decide what you wanna keep and what you don't. When you log off of real comp, it, they will be gone anyway. It'll default back to what it always was, unless you save the search. And then that way it'll be your regular old save search that you can look at all the time, whenever you want to. Now, you can do the same thing as well with another search. So this time we searched residential, we're gonna search condos this time. So I'm gonna go back home and I'm gonna put in ACTV for active. I'm gonna put CO this time for condos, space, and I'm looking for condos in Royal Oak. Now, okay. I, Royal Oak has two words to it, so I can't type that in, but I can if I know the code number, and I happen to know the code number for Royal Oak, which is 02251. Now, kind of cool, just that simple, active CO and my number, and when I click enter, there's 127 that are currently on the market. But this time I'm gonna click on price because I wanna get rid of the leases. When I click on that, there's several ways to do that, but this I found is one of the easiest. So I see all the leases when I sort by price. I can come back up to my speed bar. I'm gonna put a dollar sign and I'm gonna put 10 plus because I want to get rid of anything that is $10,000 or under, okay, for my leases. And when I hit enter, now I'm down to 61. And I can see that 
for, we're up to 47, well, the, the uh, lowest is 47,000 for a condo and the highest is 699. So that's how, it, so I would definitely think of saving this if you have a farm area, do your search and save it. Again, it will update the information as it comes in to the system. That way you will always have a search available. I can add to this. If I click the plus sign, I can go up and let's say that I want square footage, at least 1200 or more. So I can put a space and go SQFT space. So Sam Quincy, Frank Tom, put a space and I want square footage at least 1500 or more. And when I hit enter, oh, I think I put too many spaces there. There we go. And when it turns red, that's what you, that lets you know that, hey, something's wrong here. Okay. One, I think I put too many space. Look for that too. SQFT space 15. 100 plus. Oh, it doesn't like me. Maybe there's nothing out there with that. Let's see. It'll also tell you, it might not be what you typed in. It. Oh, well, yeah. I, I think I'm too big for my britches here. Hold on. It just might not be anything available. Let's just do a thousand. There we go. I didn't get the red. And oh, I did. Okay, so it's not understanding something which is why I like to do them right on because you just have to figure out, well, what am I doing that's not quite working here? And it could be something very, very simple. Nope, it just doesn't like that one. Okay. So sometimes you just don't get to have that. So I wonder what that might be. That could be an updated change, but it will definitely tell you when it won't be able to type anything in. We'll try that a little bit later with something else. So how do I get to search by zip codes? Kind of cool. I'm gonna put in active. So ACTV, I'm gonna move to another part of the state here. I'm gonna put in ZIP. That's the code for zip, space 48038, space. So your customer wants to live in that particular zip code. We want residential. And notice how I can put this in any order that I want. And I'm looking for homes that are 200 or more. So let's say, well, let's go 192 dash up to. 315 just in case price changes and when i hit enter there's 12. so i just told the system find all active properties in zip code 48038 that are residential that are between 192,000 up to 315,000. and voila here's 12 properties just that fast so again remember you can do this on your phone and you can do it on your iPad too. You don't always have to be at a desktop in order to do so. Now, let's try this. What if I have more than one city that I have to type in? What do I do? Well, again, you definitely have to make sure that you go into any of the searches and get that five area digit number. So if I want to look in Brighton and Brighton Township, I'm gonna go active, let's say residential. I'm gonna put in zero one one two one space zero one one two two space and i'm going to look for properties that are 300 or more so two let's say 92 plus with three bedrooms and two baths and when i hit enter there's 40 properties. 
just that fast. So both in Brighton and Brighton Township. So if you know your codes, you're good to go. And eventually, you the only thing that will make the difference are your codes once you know the basis of what you can add in and can't into the program. Now, let's talk about how to do a CMA using the speed bar. This is one of my favorite ways to ever do a CMA. There's nine ways to do them in the system, but if you want to do the best and quickest and most precise CMA in real comp so that you're not sitting behind your computer trying to figure out what, what's happening and how do I find that, trust me, the speed bar is the way to go. So here's how you put in the sequence. And this is one of the sequences you cannot break, okay? If you do, you won't get your CMA. So here's how you type it in. Soul, space, S like in Sam, D as in David for soul date, space. How many days do you want to go back? So today is the 1st of April. Let's see what happened in March. So I'm going to put 0 31. So that's going to take me to literally to March 1st up until yesterday, space. I'm going to do residential, space. And let's see what happened in Troy. Notice how I typed in the city Troy because it's only one word. I, you can do that with single uh, spellings of um, cities. But if it had more than one word, I'd have to put in the code. So let's see what happened. When I hit enter, 69 properties sold in Troy from March 1st to March 31st. And again, if I click on price, I've got the leases and I have the ones that actually sold. So if I'd like to get rid of the leases, I can actually click on that box and I'll put in dollar sign. And I'm gonna get rid of my leases again by putting in 10 plus, hit enter, and I'm down to 54. Now watch this guys. I'm going to go ahead and select everything. Come on down to believe it or not the print button because the print but for whatever reason, they put the CMA report in the print button. That's where it's located. So I'll click on print. I'll come on down and I'll get my multi-map because I want to see where all these are located. I'll hold my control button down and click on CMA one line. I'm going to do CMA one line landscape too so you guys see the difference of the two. And when I scroll on down, I'll click on print to PDF. Now, this, this does not mean I'm printing. It just means I'm generating the report that if I want to print, I can. So it's going to take a second to pull all that information up for us. And here's my header. And here's all of Troy. So it shows me right here with the little pin marks. Of course, where the where the properties are located, I'm going to blow that up for you there so you can see that a little bit better. And then I get a summary of each of the property. And we're scrolling on down a little bit. Now, this is everything. And when we scroll back down now, here's the first report on what happened in Troy from March 1st to March 31st, every property that sold. So. You've got the address, the beds, the baths. You've got the date that it sold. You've got the sold price per square footage. You've got CDOM, cumulative days on the market. From beginning to end, how long did it take to sell the property? You've got your original price, your list price, and your sold price if it changed. And then you have the sold price percentage of the original list price. So how close did we come to selling it for what we originally listed it for. Then if I continue to scroll down, same report, we have our listing count, there's 54 properties. So you have your averages of your listing price, sold price, square footage and age of property. And then down at the bottom, you have your averages and medians. So it looks like we started at about 302, but on average property sold at about 393 or 293, sorry, right there. So, and that's the portrait. Here's the same report, but it's landscape style. So it's kind of like what you like the most, you know, how you'd like to present it. 
Nothing's changed. Now, let's put a flip to this. So that was everything in Troy. But when you're doing a CMA, you want to lock in on certain areas. So we know the whole city of Troy probably went, it went for something like two, on average, 293 in the month of March. Well, I'm going to specify that a little bit. Remember the grid single line that we're on? Now I can break it down and put in by clicking in the column. I can click on insert column and I'm going to scroll on down and put subdivision. Click apply. It'll take a second or two. There's my subdivision. And I'm going to sort by subdivision. And as I scroll down, there they are. They're all gathered together. Let's say that I need to do a sub in Windmill Park. So I can grab those, just those, because Let's say your customer wants to move there, or let's say that that's where they live. Now, granted, you could go back more than 30 days, obviously, but let's say that's what happened, and I can scroll on down, and I can do my CMA just that fast. I can roll it into CMA. I could roll it into cloud CMA, or I could do this and be done with it. I'll click on print. I'm going to get my flyer. I'm going to get my client photo display so they could see the inside of the property. I'm going to get multi-map and I'm going to do my CMA one liner. I'll scroll on down and I'll click on print to PDF and doing a CMA like this very quick and fast. You're talking less than 10 minutes because there's no, there's nothing to think about either. It oh. happened or it didn't happen in this area and then you can play with the time frame i only went back a month but if you wanted to go back six months if you wanted to go back 90 days if you wanted to go back a year you could do that so here's three properties that sold in windmill uh, point and my customer happens to live in windmill point and here they're calling me and i got my properties right here notice that it takes off the listing agents information and puts yours So here are my flyers for the properties that sold in Windmill. And then here are the inside shots for each of the property. Now, you're not printing this. You're literally showing this to your customer on, their, on your computer or your iPad or even your phone, just like I am. And look, it gives you information here, too. So look at this one. It was listed for 229, but it sold for 238. So it gives you a little bit more information on different reports here. And we're scrolling down and here's the next one. Again, it listed for 279, but it sold for 290. And the customer is able to go through and see. Now, you haven't printed anything, but this is your CMA. And then here's the map so that it, it kind of proves you're in the right area. And then here is your actual CMA. So, my friends, that is really the quickest way ever to do a CMA. I mean, I know there's lots of ways to do it in real comp but if we're talking about a surefire way that you cannot miss it's with the speed bar for sure so i'm going to go through that one more time and i'm going to pick another area so let me go back to this okay and again notice how i just went 31 days but if i go back and do like 60 you can change that up and hit enter and be able to get the information that you need so it's you can't type a subdivision in but you can't you just like you can't do basement and garage but you can use your grid single line to add in whatever it is that you're looking for to help you do a better search okay so i'll click back on home and let's try that again with another area here so i'm going to 
go back to my speed bar. I'll click on soul. Oh, sorry. There we go. Sold space SD for sold date space. I'm going to go back 90 days on this one. Zero dash 90 space. And I'm going to, let's see here. Well, we'll go to Brighton again. Let's see what we've got here. I'm going to put in zero, one, one, two, one space. And we're going to do residential. There we go. And when I hit enter, there's 12 properties. And then again, be, oh, I left that on there. I meant to take that off. There's my subdivision. So you can see it comes back. And again, if your customer throws out a particular sub and you're thinking, oh, well, nothing sold here. That way, when you're doing your quick searches and you put in the information and you get, you're not getting what you expect to get, I curb my frustration right away. I go right into the speed bar and I use the sequence. And sure enough, it tells me everything that I need to know. So if nothing happened in 90 days, I can now know I can go back 180 days and get more information. If nothing happened in 180 days, I can do my 365 and hit enter. And then if nothing happens, just nothing happens. I just know that I need to adjust and get the next sub closest subdivision that I can to do my next CMA or zip code or whatever happened in the, in the area that you're looking for. But this is probably, again, like I state, the best way possible to do your CMA and then put it in whatever report that you want to do it. It will save you a boatload of time, okay? So use that sequence, it helps, it helps a lot, okay? And again, you can't break it, it's sold, space SD, space number of zero dash, number of days back from today, your area, and is it residential or condo or multifamily? What is it that you're looking for? Once you get it, add in your subdivision if you need it or zip code if you need it or uh, whatever it is that you're gonna need location-wise to break it down and then pick from that point. And then you can add your garage if you wanted to or your basement if you needed to do that, okay? And that's the best way to do your CMAs. I've got one more thing to show you guys using the speed bar. Not that it's really happening now, at least I hope it's not happening now, but you can look for open houses. I hope nobody's holding an open house, but we are gonna find out, okay? This should be no, no we should get zero Zippo results right now, but let's find out. So the code for open house in the speed bar is OH space, and then you put in the actual date. So zero, let's see, zero four dash, what is this Friday coming up here? Zero four, there we go. Zero four dash 2020. And I'm gonna take it up to Monday. Let's see. So 04-06-2020. We should get zero results. Thank you. Yay. No, it's not no one's having an open house. Thank goodness. But that's what should you would see a slew of everyone. Let's see if I can go back in time. Let's see if I it's smart enough to do that. So I'm gonna try something new. Oh, hold on one second. That was wrong. Hold on one second. Yeah, let's see. I'm going to go back in time and see if they remember what was held. And let's see here. Okay, so normally I would think that it would show a history of this. It does not. So I was just trying out something new. You can only see what is currently on the market or for open houses back then. I'm gonna just stretch it just to be on the safe side here. Nope, so it only shows what is scheduled, okay? But that is the code of what you would do to typing in for your 
open houses. You could also search for each other. You know, if you if you needed to call an agent, you could easily put in AG for agent space, and then you could type in their last name. And then, so I looked up everyone with the last name Burns, and these are all of our agents that belong to us with the last name Burns. And if you needed to call them, by all means you could, or email them, you could, just with that code AG and search for them. You can't put in their first name, just their last name. Or let's say their name is O'Neill or something like that. I can put an O and an asterisk. And when you scroll down, or O'Brien's, O'Neill's, things of that sort, you'll be able to find them that way. So that, my friends, is the conclusion of searching for the speed bar. So don't forget, you can find uh, what you need for the printout under that gray question mark, and it also will play the video again for you as well that we created. You also can go into the help guide and if you need to look up anything, this is this is your holy grail of real comp right here. Everything that we have and offer is here. And you can always go into the RCO3 manuals and videos, print out your manuals for anything, and go to the video and video recordings. Now, if you guys want other live videos, because it looks like this is what we're going to be doing for a while here, we've got all our other subjects going on. So you could click here for the live webinars and you can scroll on down and see what we have coming your way. Often a sign, we have not stopped teaching anything. So I'll remind, uh, again, you're in the speed bar. We've got often a sign coming. We've got new subscribers for the new folks, CMAs, setting up your transactions. It's all here, okay? So, and every week we're gonna add in more. So. And we have to do it weekly because, again, we don't know what lies ahead for us right now. We might, you know, we don't know if it's the end of the month or it's before the end of the month. We don't know. So every week we're going to add in new classes until we all get back to being normal again. So thank you guys so much for joining us. Hope to see you on future webinars and be safe and take care.